All right, boys and girls, so we were talking about the artist Chris Uphuse, and I think that's a pretty cool artist since he is still alive and unlike most of the artists that we study with. Um, in his video, we saw a lot of hearts with animated faces, so that's what we're going to work on creating today. You're going to need um, white paper, a Sharpie, you're going to need Crayola markers, and you're also going to need watercolor paints for this entire lesson. It's probably going to take us a couple class periods to get through it. So the first thing we're going to want to do is start to fill our paper with hearts. And if you're not comfortable drawing with Sharpie right away, go ahead, start with a pencil. I think this is a good amount of hearts. Next step, you're going to draw faces in them. Again, with Sharpie, if you're not confident in the Sharpie, start with pencil and you can always trace over your pencil lines when you are done. All right, once I've got my faces drawn and my hearts drawn and they're outlined in Sharpie, I'm going to begin working with um, Crayola markers. We want to work with these markers because they are water-based, so this is going to be important for this step. If you're using a permanent marker, you're not going to be able to achieve this technique. Working with a water-based marker allows us to turn our markers into paint, essentially. I like to use the thicker markers and you'll notice when you look at the markers, there is a tip and then there's this wide side. If I use the wide side, I can get a nice thick outline by tipping this marker on its side. And all I need to worry about doing is outlining my hearts. I do not need to color them in. I should not be coloring them in. Okay, now I have all of my hearts outlined and I am ready for my next step. And this is kind of cool because I'm going to turn my marker into paint and I'm going to um, get a variation or a, a change in the color happening across my hearts. So I'm going to get myself some water and I'm going to come in and start to put water over the marker then I can start to pull that marker in to my heart.
Okay, after I've done this, I want to um, think about what I want to do in terms of my background. For my background, I can use the same techniques. I can work with my marker and I can start to create rainbows, which were very um, significant or popular within Chris Uphugh's work. I can work with a watercolor tray and watercolor paints and I can add details in the background. I'm going to work with the watercolor paints since I have them. Now remember, when you're ready to paint with watercolors, you have to get your bubbles wet. You have to get water in them. So I'm going to paint a rainbow in my background. So I know I'm going to need some red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and purple. The nice thing about our watercolors is they're already put in rainbow order for us. So once I've got those water droplets in there, I can come in and I can start to pick up paint. Now when I paint my rainbow, I don't want to paint on top of my hearts. I want to make sure it looks like it's behind. So I'm going to stop when I come to my hearts. Okay. And with this, my rainbow is done. I'm going to let this dry a little bit and then I can come back and tuck that in. I can also dab it with a paper towel so that it soaks up that excess paint and I can tuck that area up. I'm okay with it the way it is though. Um, some people don't like all of the excess white space. If you're one of those, then something we can do is just come in and add some different polka dots and start to fill in those spaces, making them a little more interesting, adding some more color, and then just picking up some paint in different colors and just kind of dropping it down to fill that space in. I like the whimsical nature of Chris Uphugh's hearts. I think they're fun. I think that you're going to enjoy this. I hope so. Go ahead and make it your own. It does not need to look just like Mrs. Jarek's artwork. This is yours. Make it yours. Create. Have fun. All right, guys. So I wanted to tag this on to the end of the original video that I had made. Um, now that we're home and doing remote learning at home, some of you might not have the supplies that we would have used in class. Um, in the video, we worked with Sharpies, water-based markers, and watercolor paints. If you are doing this at home and you don't have any of those items, some other options you have are working with crayons. Crayons and watercolors create a wax resist, so if you have water-based markers or a watercolor paint, you can still work with the crayon. So if I were to work with my crayon, I would go ahead and draw just like I had in the previous video. Get my whimsical face in there. I can come in, I can do my outline with my marker and because it's a crayon, it's going to keep that inside of the heart when I add water. 
and I can come in, blend, and dilute my marker like we did in the previous video. If I don't have markers but I have watercolors, same idea. Here's my crayon, make my heart with my whimsical face, and I can come in and I can paint my heart. If I want to get that nice dark outline, I can come around, outline this, let it dry, and when it dries, just use some water to pull some to the edges, or I can just go ahead and paint it. Again, there is not a right way to do these. So because I worked with crayon, it's not going to be covered by the watercolors and we're going to still see the heart. Another tool we can use is a black colored pencil. It is not going to dissolve with any water. I'm going to kind of come back over to make these outlines a little thicker. That's just a personal preference. Again, make them your own. Get my whimsical face in there. And I can go in with my marker and water. I can come in with my watercolor paints if I have them, or I can work with additional colored pencils. Again, if you want to get that darker outline, like we had in the original video, and the lighter on the inside, then I'm going to color with a heavier pressure and give a darker outline around the edges of my heart. And then I can come in and color lightly, creating the various depths of color. Now if I'm working with all colored pencils, I might decide that I need to come back in and maybe I need to add some more outlining with my black, darken some of my lines so that things pop and stand out a little better. Okay, we can also do something similar to this with crayon. So again, if all I have is crayons at home, that's fine. I'm going to draw my heart, my whimsical face. And then I can come in with a color crayon and I can start to color my heart in. And again, if I like the darker outline to give it a little bit more depth, I can come in, press a little harder with my crayon, and give it a darker variation of that color. Okay. Um, what else? If all I have are markers, that's fine too. Now, because they're water-based, do know that colors will mix. So I'm going to start with yellow. And I'm going to draw my heart and everything in yellow. So that's the shape for my eyes. And then I can come in and color it in. If I were to outline in black first and then color, the black and the yellow would mix and I would get um, this greenish color. So now that I've drawn and colored it in, I'm going to kind of go in reverse order and I can outline with my black, add my details in, and add my face on top like so if I had markers only to work in. Um, the other option, if you want to take it outside, you can work in your driveway with chalk and fill your driveway with lots of overlapping whimsical hearts inspired by our artist. Last um, technique that I want to show you, maybe you don't have a paintbrush at home, but you've got a Sharpie, you've got a black crayon, you've got the marker, you've got those items. I can come in and I'm going to use something I would find in my bathroom. So I'll draw my heart, outline it with my marker. And then I am going to use a Q-tip. I actually like the Q-tip. I feel like it does better than the brush with dissolving the paint. So I'll get my Q-tip wet and then I can come in here and I can start to 
dissolve that marker and spread it into the remaining areas and fill in my space. And again, I really like the way the Q-tip works. I feel like it pulls more of the pigments of the marker from the edge in towards the middle. Um, and I feel like I have a little bit better control with it as well. But again, if you have a brush, use a brush. If you don't have watercolors, you're fine. If you don't have markers, you're fine. Work with crayons, colored pencils. The point is to have fun making these whimsical hearts. Can't wait to see what you have created.